I'm Bruce with Bass Day at Custom Rods, and we are going to be building a rod from the ground up. Today we're going to be working with the new Venom Series rod. This one here is going to be a 6 foot 8 medium strength extra fast tip. We're using the SC3 blanks by St. Croix, so it's a real quality rod blank. We're going to build it from the ground up, and this is going to be a great rod for throwing small worms. Things like a split shot or a Senko or a wacky rig, this will be just the ideal rod for that situation. What makes these Venom Series rods so cool, well they just have a great look, right from the, the reel seat, you can see that right here. This will be our gold and silver reel seat, which is going to look real nice on this rod blank here. Kind of get a, a picture of that right there. But what's really cool about this is we have a split grip, and on the split grip, we actually use real rattlesnake skin. So we're going to wrap that rattlesnake skin right down there on the, the split grip, it's going to give it a really nice look. So not only will this be a great rod to be fishing for worm, with fishing worms with, but it's also just going to have a great look to it. The first thing we want to do when we're building a rod is you want to find the spine of your rod blank. And that's a really easy process. What you want to do is take your rod, put it down on a smooth, hard surface. You're going to bend it a little bit up here at the top, and then just slowly roll it with your hand until you feel the rod pop into the position it wants to be in. In, in this case, there it is, that's where your spine is. Once you find your spine, you want to mark it. And I've already done that on this particular rod. You just put a little piece of tape on there or something that lets you know that that's the inside of your spine. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that spine and you build your rod around the spine. So you want to get the maximum fighting strength out of your rod. For a spinning rod, you want to put your line guides right on the inside of that spine. So that when you're fighting a fish, you've got the maximum fighting power. If it's a casting rod, you put your line guides right on the spine itself. And again, that's just going to give you the, the backbone to, to support you when you're fighting that fish. That's really what separates a custom rod from a store-bought rod. Is when you buy a custom rod, you know you're going to get a rod that's built for that spine. It's going to give you the maximum power out of that rod that you're picking up. So we're now ready to get started on this rod. We've found out where the spine is, and we're going to build the rod from there. We are ready to start the build of our rod, and the first thing we're going to do is take the fighting butt, this piece right here, and we want to sand out the inner diameter so that it's going to fit snug on the back end of our fishing rod blank. And what I use is just a, a file here, and I'll go in there and I'll just sand out the insides until I can get that to fit snugly on the back side, and then we'll use epoxy to glue that onto the, to the bottom of the rod blank. So we'll get started on that right now. Bottom of my rod blank. See how it kind of goes on there snug? That's good. I will epoxy this later. I'm going to wait till I finish the rear grip and the foregrip and even the reel seat. And then after I have all those put on there, then I'm going to get the epoxy and put that together. But for now, I'm going to show you how the winding chuck works. We take that and we're going to run this right down the length of the rod blank here. Slide it right down. I'll show you how that looks. And what that does is it gives you a real clean look. You're not looking at any of the rough edges of the cork anymore. You can see it right there. So that'll be nice and snug. I've already used my china marker here. Put a little line because that's where I'm going to start my rear grip. I'm now ready to start sanding out the inside of the rear grip. Okay, this is the, the rear grip handle right here. I'm going to be putting the rear grip handle and lining it up right there on the china marker. So it's going to line up right there. This bottom piece is going to be left open. That's where I'm going to put the rattlesnake skin. It's going to give it a really nice look. But for now, I just need to take my file and go ahead and file the inside diameter of my rear grip. And what I want to do with that is I want to just make sure it fits nice and snug on my rod as well. So I'm going to work on that a little bit and I'll be back to show you how that fits on top of the rod blank. Working on our foregrip and on this particular rod, I bought a three inch piece of cork for the foregrip, but I really don't want it to be that long. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to measure one inch off the bottom, mark it with a pencil, and then I'm just going to take this little hacksaw here and cut right through this to, to shorten it down to two inches instead of three inches so that it gives me a little smaller foregrip for what I'm looking for for this particular rod. Okay, we've cut off a one inch section off the bottom of this cork. Now we're going to take this sandpaper, we're going to just smooth it out because I want this to be as smooth as possible. I also want it to be uniform, so when it slides down on top, it just looks real nice. It's just real uniform on top of the reel seat. So right now we're going to sand that down. Once I've got it sanded down, it's looking really nice, then I'm going to go ahead and start reaming this out. Um, once we've got it reamed out, slide it right down on top of the rod blank, and it'll be a nice foregrip for our rod. 
Okay, I've got all my pieces sanded and ready to go. I've got the uh, bottom grip here. I've got my uh, rear grip. Got the foregrip. And they've all been sanded out. They fit nicely on the rod blank exactly where I want them to go. At this point, it's time for me to start to do some epoxy work. I'm going to need to epoxy the uh, rear grip and the butt grip on. I'm also going to work on the snake inlay. I want to get all that part down there finished before I start putting the, uh, the tape arbors on the rod blank. Because once the tape arbors go on there, which are what hold on the reel seat right here. Um, once I put those on, I really can't work from that end down. So at this point, I want to get everything below the reel seat done, taken care of, so that once I put the tape arbors on, I'm ready to start building and work that way at the rod, rod blank. Okay, we are now applying the snake skin to the rod blank. And the way we do that is we have to measure the diameter of the rod blank. We're doing that with tape. We're just wrapping it around right at the spot where the edge of the snake skin is going to be. Once you do that, you cut it out, bring the camera over here, you just put it on the table, I'm going to line them up, what, this is the, the bottom diameter, I'll put the top diameter here, and we're going to cut along that diagonal to make sure that the, rod, the, the snake skin is the exact uh, width of the, the rod blank itself. So we're doing that right now. Once I do that, we are going to put the camera back down. After we do that, I'm going to be using uh, some clear water-based crystal clear color preserver. And I'm going to coat the back of this snake skin with the color preserver, put it on the blank, lie it flat, make sure it's real nice and tight, put some more color preserver just to make sure it's on that rod blank really good and snug. I don't want any of the uh, epoxy to get underneath there and push up on it when, that's, when, that, when I'm starting to epoxy the rod. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, I'm in the process of measuring out the snake skin to get it perfect. I'm then going to apply it to the rod blank. The uh, snake skin on there, I've glued the bottom grip right down here and I've glued the rear grip right here so these are all glued on ready to go take a look at the rattlesnake skin that's pretty cool looking right there get a look at what that looks like on the bottom so we've got the bottom part of my reel handle ready to go now we're gonna go ahead and build some masking tape arbors right here this is where we're gonna put the reel seat so next up is the reel seat right here again we got that really good looking reel seat going on here we're gonna put the masking tape in three rows right here Put the glue on that and then the, the real seat. To make your masking tape arbors, you just take your masking tape, apply it onto the reel like that, just start spinning it around. You're building it up so that your real seat is going to be able to sit flush on that. It's going to flip tight against that and it's going to hold it onto your rod blank. I'm going to go ahead and make three of these, one here, one here, one here, and then slide the real seat down the rod shaft tightly on top of that and then it'll epoxy that down as well. The handle for this rod is just about ready to go. Taking the snake skin down here, take a look at that, and we put that on. Of course again we cut that so it fit perfectly on the rod blank. Then I put some color preserver on there to get it to stick down to the rod blank itself. Then I took some rod finish and I put a nice coat on it. And The first coat's going to be a little rough, it's going to be a little bumpy. Let it spin and dry overnight. The second day I came back and put a second coat right on there and now you can see how it's really, really nice and smooth. It's got that great look to it. So that part of the handle's done. I've already epoxied on the rear grip, the rear grip and the bottom grip here, so that's all done. And I put on some tape arbors. That's these right here. And for this reel seat, it's kind of a longer reel seat, so I have three of them spaced out right there. And let's take a look at the reel seat. Did some work on that as well. The real seat's a little bit long, so what I've done is I've taken it and I've reversed it because I want my, my handle down a little farther on the pole. I'm looking for some perfect balance there. So I'm reversing it this way, and then it's still a little too long for me. So what I did is I took my foregrip and I hollowed out the inside there. You can see that quite a bit so that it'll fit on top of the real seat. I'm going to take about an inch of that real seat away so it'll make the, the whole handle a little shorter but the perfect length for what I want. Also, you've got to make sure that you leave the top diameter nice and snug onto the rod blank itself. So this is probably the hardest process of the, the whole rod build is getting this piece right here ready. But now, I simply take that and I'm going to put it right over the threads of my reel seat here. Make sure I put that on nice and snug and careful. I don't want to break any pieces out at this point. Work too hard on it. Okay, you can see how that fit nice and snug on there. But I still want to make sure I have enough room for the reel to fit into the reel seat. So I'm going to test that out. Plenty of room. Crank that down just to get a feel for what it looks like. 
And there you go. That's what the real seat there is going to look like with the, the foregrip on there. Make sure that I have enough room here for the reel to come off nice and easy as well. And it comes off pretty easy. I still want to give it a little more room. So I'm going to move the foregrip up just a bit. There we go. That should be perfect right there. Now I'm ready to put the entire reel seat onto the rod blank. Let me bring that down here. And it's got to fit snug on these arbors to make sure it's going to be, oh, that's good right there. Fits nice and tight. And I want to line it up perfectly on the reel grip, on the rear grip there. And then the last, probably the most important part, make sure that this is lined up with the spine of your rod. Because you're going to be putting your line guides right there along the in, inside of the spine. So there it is. And now you can take a look at what the completed handle of this rod is going to look like. There it is. It's a great looking rod handle right there. The next step will simply be to epoxy these two pieces onto the rod blank itself. And once I do that, I am ready to start to build the, the line guides and finish it up.